Dolphin fans, what's going on? Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports. And if you're looking for the latest Dolphins news and rumors, you're in the right place. We are quickly approaching 4,000 subscribers on this channel. The reason why I'm going to tell you all to subscribe right now before we get into the latest news and rumors, because more subs simply means we can do more videos for here for you for free at Chat Sports. All right, we're going to talk about the quarterback conversation here. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he has already been named the starter week five verse the San Francisco 49ers. The reason why this is important is because when asked this week, Brian Flores simply said, I am not going to be pressured into starting Tua. I know what the media is saying. I know what some of the fans want. But for me, the best chance for our football team to win is with Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback. Now, he also did go on to say that when Tua is fully healthy and when we feel that he is healthy, we could potentially put him in. But Fitzpatrick, he's had basically, I'll say, two good games and he's had two bad games. This is what he's done this season. Four touchdowns, five interceptions. He's also been able to get a few things done with his leg. My only point to this is, you know, Brian Flores kind of goes on to say that these players, they're like my kids. And he's referring to Tua, and he's basically referring to his hip injury. My only problem <laughs> with Flores saying that he's not going to be pressured into starting Tua is like, you all know, Miami's kind of been this place where head coaches – Go to die. And if owner Stephen Ross is like, hey, man, we want to uh, put him in the football game. Brian Flores right now is one and three. One and three coaches. I don't know if you have everything to say like, hey, we're not going to be pressured. Again, just something to think about. If Fitz does struggle, we'll, we will get into potentially when Tua could end up starting. So let's look at this week five matchup because Fitz is going to be the starter. Dolphins at one and three. They're going to go to Santa Clara and take on the 49ers who are two and two. The opening odds of this game, the over under was 47. What I want everyone to do here, I know this isn't the 49ers report, but Keep an eye on Jimmy G because the total over-under is right now off the board. 49ers are eight-and-a-half point favorites, which is pretty interesting, right? That team's really banged up, and Miami had a great game last week against the Seattle Seahawks. So before we get into it, before I give you my prediction, predict the score. Dolphins at the 49ers. I want every person right now, scroll on down. Let me know in the comments section. Who's going to win this game? Dolphins at 49ers. Now, if you want to go bet on this game, or if you want to bet on all the NFL games this year, you can do that at chatsports.com slash bet. BetUS is the reason why we were able to make today's show, so please go support our sponsors. But when you go to chatsports.com slash bet, use that promo code DOLPHINS125. What does that mean exactly? If you put down $100, you're going to get $125 extra to bet with. And, uh... I don't mean to brag, but I'm about to sweeten this deal a little bit. Let's say you go get started with BetUS. I'm also going to hook you up with a Dolphins jersey. Now, this offer, not going to last forever. Look right below me. The offer ends October 15th at midnight. So if you want a free Dolphins jersey, after you get started and deposit $100 with BetUS... We're going to get you one, okay? You can get a Tua. If you want a Devontae Parker, we can get you one of those. If you just want some extra details on how to get it, you see the email below. Let us know. Dolphins at chatsports.com. I'm going to say it again. You want a free Dolphins jersey? Dolphins at chatsports.com. All right, so let's now look at the remaining games here for Miami. Week 5 against the 49ers, Broncos, Chargers, Rams, right? The reason why I'm showing you these upcoming games is simple. Because everyone, and I'm still wondering, because I'm a believer, that it's going to be two a time sooner or later. The question is, when exactly is it going to be? Now, you got the Cardinals, the Jets, a bye week in the Jets. For me personally, if I was going to do it, I'd probably make the move in week 11. Or, if you're worried even sooner, hey, at this point... If two is your future and he's healthy, I'm a believer that you just put him in. Then you got week 14 against the Chiefs, the Patriots, Raiders, and the Bills to wrap it up. That is not an easy way to end your schedule whatsoever. Now, hey, until this happens, I'm going to ask the question, and we're going to make the pinned comment on today's video as well. Will Tua start a game in 2020? Give me a one for yes, or I want you to type zero for no. I am going to continue to type my one for yes because you drafted him in the top five, five overall this past year. I'm a believer that he's going to be good when fully healthy, and uh, you're going to guarantee get another Fitzpatrick game where he throws for three picks. So I'm going to type my one for yes. However, I'm a believer that it's going to be a little bit later on. I'm going to guess it's going to be in week 11 during their bye. All right, we got some good news now. Byron Jones, could he be playing week five? 
the reports are saying that this guy is on track, which obviously is major, major news here. Ever since he left week two with that groin injury, he has been unable to have a full practice since he missed week three, he missed week four, and the biggest reason why he ended up missing week three, which was that Thursday night game, was for the hope that he'd be ready to rock and roll against Seattle. Now, obviously, that was unable to happen. Now, he got a little bit extra rest. Now, he's finally going to be able to, looks like, rock and roll here, going up against the 49ers, who they have tons of injuries themselves, and He's obviously not going to be covering tight end George Kittle. However, he could potentially be covering a guy like Debo Samuel, maybe a Brandon Ayuk. This 49ers team, though, they are going to be looking at who's going to be the starting quarterback. I'm a believer that Jimmy G is going to be back this week. Now, in terms of Byron Jones, he was inactive, and also Gavon Frazier as well. So we're finally going to be able to see again Byron Jones, Xavier Howard as a cornerback one, cornerback two, and Noah Igbenogany, well, he has not been very good trying to fill in for Jones. Maybe he can just go back to being the nickel, which originally why the Dolphins drafted him in the first round. So let me know here, how many years have you been a Dolphins fan? When we launched this show about, man, it seems like a month, two months ago at this point, I was curious to be able to meet some Dolphin fans, and you guys are passionate. I respect it. So every person, that, if you've made it this far in the video, let us know how many years have you been a Dolphins fan. Let's get juicy now. Devontae Parker going to the Green Bay Packers. It's not really a rumor. It's more of a story. That's something else that we like to cover here at Chat Sports and give you our two cents, if you will. So the article was titled, Blockbuster Moves We'd Love to See Before the Trade Deadline. The idea was this. You trade Devontae Parker to the 4-0 Green Bay Packers because the Packers right now have been without Devontae Adams, also without Al Lazard. They've had a ton of injuries at the wide receiver position, not to mention that they didn't even get Rodgers a freaking wide receiver in the draft, and yet Rodgers right now is playing an MVP type of level. The reasoning behind this move, the Dolphins, they've been absolute hoarders when it comes to stocking up draft picks. So potentially, for a 1-3 team, you move your best player, get an extra draft pick, and then continue to push forward to the future, right? The only reason why I'll say that I would not make this trade is because, guess what, you also drafted Tua. So if you give up your best wide receiver, your best offensive option, that's not going to be very good for Tua. And Devontae Parker's been one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League, not just last season, but the past 20 games. 96 catches, 10 touchdowns, close to 1,500 yards. So I'm going to hit you here with this trade idea. You're going to be the GM here, okay? Let me know. Why for yes and for no? Would you make this trade? The Dolphins, they get a 2021 first-round pick from the Green Bay Packers. The Packers get Devontae Parker. Dolphin fans just got some news that the Miami Dolphins have been given clearance to go full capacity of 65,000 fans at Hard Rock Stadium. Now, the team still says that they plan to stick to the 13,000 capacity. Of note, the next home game for the Dolphins is on October 25th versus the Chargers Week 7. We'll see how packed the stadium is, but as of right now, it's going to be 13,000.